Thank you everybody for joining Lunch with Leanne and welcome to Wednesday, July 29th. Our guest today is Eric with the Idaho Housing and Finance Association and we're really excited to have you here, Eric. Thank you for joining us. You bet. So this is our second of our ADA series that is celebrating 30 years of the ADA. So Eric um, and the Idaho Housing and Finance Association is very much a supporter of the work and allies um, with links. So we're really excited to have Eric here. But what I am also very excited about is I got a sneak peek at Eric's lunch, but I didn't actually get, we didn't actually talk about it. We saved that for you, the viewer. So Eric, what are you having for lunch today? These are roasted Viking purple potatoes from Peaceful Belly Farms with a little curry. Ooh. And and where do you get your Peaceful Belly Farms now? Are they doing like delivery or are you doing pickup or is it, did you go there? These I got at the co-op. Oh, great. Yeah, they carry a lot of a lot of local growers, so you know I try to, you know, kind of support them that way. Support them that way. That's great. That looks delicious. Yeah. So, did you make that before today? And what's in it? I it's just roasted potatoes. I, I usually steam them, you know, kind of par par cook them ahead mm -hmm. of time, and then have just potatoes ready to cut up and make any way I want. Oh, that's a smart idea. Yeah. So I'm having, I only brought a little bit because it's a warm lunch. I don't know why I was inspired to have a warm lunch on a hundred degree weather, but this is vegetarian uh, white bean chili. So there's Ooh. some corn in there and some um, red peppers and green peppers. And it only took 10 nice. minutes in my Instapot because it was frozen. So I, you know, I've been meaning to ask you, Leanne, are you, um, are you sponsored by Instapot, Instant Pot by any chance? <laughs> no. And I should switch that by pressure <laughs> you cooker. You should, you should totally, <laughs> you should totally hit them up for sponsorship for this. I think that's a natural. Right. It saves my bacon. It is, uh, yeah. if you ask anyone. And, I, I and cooks it too. It. Yeah. It, it yeah. does. Actually, totally. we use our Traeger for that. I don't know if anyone uses uh, yeah. the Traeger outside. It's a pretty good way to make bacon. We are and, making and we should acknowledge Sierra, who's our interpreter too. Yes. yes we we're absolutely. just talking with her about um, you know, whether or not she gets to save the day when she's out and about in the community. And um, I sort of imagine her in a like a cape that says, you know, ASL on the back. I am also just super impressed with her ability to keep a straight face as, as we, I know. we talk about her. So that is exactly. very much a skill that a licensed interpreter probably has. That's right. Yeah, she's a brown belt, she said, yeah. interpreter, so. <laughs> so. So Eric, we're here today to not just talk about lunch and fun things, but also um, a little bit about the 30 year of the ADA and your wonderful organization. So I would love to start with a question um, that I'm starting all these series with. Um, so what does the ADA mean to you as a citizen, Eric? It means, um access, equity, uh, independence, um, basically inclu inclusiveness, you know, yeah. in life and in society and community. Uh, it means, you know, I can uh, go places with my friends that might not have, you know, uh, the ability to, you know, navigate steps or something like that. And so we can, you know, we can go to, out to eat and and travel together. I travel a lot with folks that use wheelchairs and scooters. And, you know, so I've learned a little bit about, you know, the, the importance of um, accessible routes and entries and buildings and that kind of thing. So. Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So it really does uh, increase your quality of life, huh? With those friends Absolutely. and people who would take, yeah, great. Yeah. So tell me a little bit about your introduction, introduction and, and I think you, you know, kind of your, what you phrased as your, your entrance into the disability movement, right? Like what did that journey, what's your origin yeah. story there? I don't know about the movement, but I, I guess, you know, the way I would phrase it is, you know, the, my disability consciousness, you know, started um, that awakening was thanks to a woman that was um, kind of a pioneer in adaptive dance and performance. My parents were both modern dancers back in the, you know, 50s, 60s, 70s. And 
And one of the other dancers was a woman named Ann Riordan who um, came down with rheumatoid arthritis in her 20s. So she had to kind of stop performing as a regular dancer and went back to college and got a degree in special ed. And, and so she started two kind of adaptive dance companies, uh, one called Sunrise Dance Company and the other one called Sunrise Wheels that were sort of early, uh, early models for, you know, adaptive movement. And, and so, you know, kind of growing up in that, in that kind of extended family, you know, I go to see her performances and the Sunrise group and get to meet people. And, and it was pretty impactful for everybody, um, really had an impact on me. So um, yeah. early on as a, you know, kid, I was 10, 12, something like that. And then later on, I was a volunteer with a group called Splore doing uh, adaptive recreation. So we did, call, you know, river trips on the Colorado River and cross-country ski, uh, you know, uh, activities and things like that. So lots of different clients with different needs and, and uh, you know, just kind of always been part of my life. So that's awesome. So outdoor recreation and adaptive outdoor recreation, that sounds like a fun um, that's one of my passions, right? Like, how do I get outdoors doing the things I love with the people I love? And uh, exactly. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. so what are some of your favorite recreational opportunities, Eric? I know you're working on like a committee around the recreation and fun opportunities for you, but what about right. you? What do you like to do? You know, I, I enjoy just exploring the foothills and that's kind of my daily medicine really these days is uh, getting out early in the morning and and uh, kind of walking the, the foothills trails. Um, I live near military reserve so that's kind of a special spot for me and uh, you know I used to bike more I still bike a little bit um, a little bit of river stuff but not not so much yeah uh, so that's awesome. Well, I, I want to switch gears a little bit. We're going to go back to the ADA celebration and what, what's going on at the end of the interview. But, you know, I think really right now uh, we have seven viewers on, on Link's Facebook. We're also for the first time going live on two Facebook pages at the same oh, wow. time. So it seems to have worked. I'm very impressed with us. Um, mm -hmm. And I think most of our viewers would love to hear about what is the Idaho housing um, finance association, which and finance association, which I always have yeah. to look at because I just call it IHFA. Um, right. <laughs> so exactly. I look down and stumble through that. We'll call it IHFA from this point. So, so tell me a little bit about maybe we can start with the home preservation program. That seems to be pretty sure. hot right now. That's really top of mind for a lot of people. We um, IHFA received some CARES Act funding that was part of the state's allocation. And so we are doing homelessness prevention for folks that lost income because of COVID-19. And so if they meet certain criteria, you know, eligibility criteria as defined by that program, they can apply for up to $2,500 per household. And that money can be used to pay for rent or utilities. So if they're facing eviction and they need help with that, uh, they can actually go to idahohousing.com and click on the you know, need help paying rent link and that'll take them where they need to go. Wow, that's awesome. That's a big one. A lot of, lot of activity there, um, huge demand right now. Yeah, and, and it sounds like you guys did some work even before the CARES funding um, to find some privatized mm -hmm. money for that. And now, and yeah. now you, that's, that's excellent because that, yeah. that money took a little bit of time, huh? Yeah, we, we started out with private funds uh, from our Home Partnership Foundation and then Wells Fargo kicked in some additional money. So we started out with, you know, about 300 and something thousand dollars and used that for the first month to really get a system in place and, and start helping people um, kind of slowly so we could figure out, you know, work out all the kinks in terms of the service delivery. And uh, boy, it really picked up as soon as we advertised the CARES Act money. It's been nonstop. So I'm really... Yeah. I'm really impressed with the folks that are administering that program and doing the intake. Um, they're working a lot of hours. Yeah, meeting that very much community need, right? Housing is, oh, yeah. is so critical. So, um, and you mentioned, we just have to go to the website for that, right? For that Correct. information and application. So we'll pop right. that website in, in the comments here for you guys and um, you'll have access to that. 
is there anything else important to know about that program or maybe some of the other things that um, our wonderful IHFA is known for? Well, you know, we do administer the federal, um, it, it used to be called Section 8 Rental mm -hmm. Assistance Voucher. Now it's the Home Choice Voucher um, and, or Housing Choice Voucher, I think. And uh, we administer that in 34 of 44 counties in Idaho, mostly outside of Southwest Idaho. Mm -hmm. We have uh, two housing authorities in Southwest Idaho in Boise and Ada County, and then the balance of the Southwest. So we have branch offices in Coeur d'Alene, Lewiston, Twin Falls, and Idaho Falls. I just realized I should slow down a little bit. <laughs> Sorry, Sierra. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, and, and so those folks who are outside um, Boise City and Ada County, um, but those who are inside, who do they turn to? Are, the, are those 10 counties, are they just... Um, out of luck, they don't get to talk to you guys, or who would they call? So, first of all, I want to make a distinction between the CARES Act money and our normal housing choice voucher program. So, the CARES Act, anybody in the state can contact uh, contact us through that link on IdahoHousing.com. Um, but for just standard uh, rental assistance vouchers, they would go to one of our branch offices if they're in the southwestern part of the state. There are, like I said, the Boise City Ada County Housing Authority locally in Ada County, and then SICHA, S-I-C-H-A dot org is the one that handles the other 10 counties in Southwest Idaho. Which SICA stands for Southwest Idaho Cooperative Housing Authority, right? Very good. Very good. <laughs> Well, I have to say, I do have Eric's cheat sheet in front of me, yes, so I'm only good. as good as the person who provides it for me. That's great. So um, are you guys a for-profit, a private industry, a nonprofit? Maybe tell the viewers a little bit about your makeup at so, IHFA. Yeah, basic, basic his, you know, overview of the history. Uh, IHFA was created through an act of legislation in 1972. Mm -hmm to specifically be a non-state entity. So we are a private not-for-profit and uh, we, man we have a mortgage loan program. We issue private activity bonds on the national market to raise money to invest in mortgages for Idahoans. Uh, we have multifamily finance uh, you know, programs that we use to help developers build affordable housing. Uh, we have an emergency services grant program uh, that, that uh, helps uh, fund homeless shelters, domestic violence shelters around the state, transitional housing providers. And then I run the Housing Information Referral Center, which uh, part of that is a housing hotline. So I talk to people on a daily basis, uh, you know, since 1998, that's when I created that. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's been a long time and I've talked to a lot of people uh, who are experiencing different kinds of housing needs. Yeah, that's over great. Time. Kind of, I think you guys, you know, at Link and, you know, 211 and Jesse Tree, a lot of other, uh, lot, of, lot of other organizations are fielding calls on a regular basis from folks that need help. Yeah. Yeah, you are definitely one of our strong partners because we support 17 counties out of Idaho's 44 at Link. So yeah. uh, it is really critical that we have housing partners in all of those communities because like like we said, housing is, is a base, it's a need that we all have, right? What is mm -hmm. our shelter? situation. Right. Um, so let's let's switch gears. We have just about one or two more minutes. Um, okay. These always go so fast. I could just talk to my guests for a very long time. Um, what are you, what are some things that we have to look forward to that maybe you're working on or even um, IHFA is working on with the celebration coming up? We've got events through October. Yeah. So what are some things you can share with our audience about that? Well, um, I'm kind of representing IHFA on the ADA 30 celebration committee, and I'm part of the recreation committee with, uh, you know, some other folks, uh, mostly the folks involved with Idaho Access Project, uh, mm -hmm. Diana, Dana, and Jeremy, and a couple of other folks. 
So we're uh, planning on exploring some lower foothills trails to look at um, access issues and you know figure out what kind of barriers there are and what opportunities there might be for uh, ridge to rivers to to help make some of those trail systems a little more accessible mm-hmm. um, you know for folks with either a mobility or a sensory impairment so um, i'm excited about that um, we also uh, you know ihfa uh, we're working on a fair housing and let's see fair housing and innovative partnerships grant education outreach outreach initiative so i'm kind of working with some partners to put that together and you know really raise awareness about fair housing rights and responsibilities around the state with with some of our other stakeholders and yeah. so i'm looking forward to that and that includes you know uh access and and design and construction issues uh, as well as uh, community accessibility i think so Great, important work. So uh, we, when we were prepping for this, we had, we were going to put two links in, uh, in addition to the fair housing, um, the link for Idaho Fair Housing and Finance Association. We were going to put the housingforum.org and also ramp up Idaho. And um, yeah. I would love for you just to share a quick little bit about those two sites and and what people can look like it, look for in those. Sure. When I share them. Right. That first one is Fair Housing Forum. Dot org, and that is uh, sort of a, a web presence for the Idaho Fair Housing Forum, which is a group of stakeholders that either are impacted by or, um, you know, uh, work within the Fair Housing Act. And so I manage content for that. We created that back in 2007, I think. Uh, so it's, a, it's really just a clearinghouse of information. It gets a lot of traffic, surprisingly. Um, <laughs> The other one is rampupidaho.org. And uh, briefly, that's an outgrowth of, of another project I'm involved with through the Idaho Rural, project, uh, Rural Partnership. And it came out of a community review in Triggs, Idaho with my friend, Brian Dale, who you might know. I do, uh, I like Brian. Brian, <laughs> Brian, yeah. Brian uses a scooter and we were trying to go out and get a drink after working all day in Driggs. And the only place in town that was still open had a couple steps in front of it a wine bar there and so we did a team lift and got brian's scooter in and out uh, and then went back the second night and there were about 10 of us you know in and out of there and so you know it occurred to me that those steps were not just a barrier to brian uh, they were a barrier to commerce and so ramp up idaho is really an an, uh, a project to raise awareness of the commercial um you know aspects of access and so our tagline there is access means business. And you know we're trying to educate business owners about tax advantages uh, that they can take advantage of um, you know, to remove barriers to access. And I think remove barriers to their uh, profit line, right? Because Absolutely. I mean, when you've yeah. worked a long day and that beverage, I mean, you can make some good money off people who work in hard days <laughs> and want and to think, eat the yeah. drink and, and be with family and friends. Exactly. And I, th- I think that's the point we make is it's, you know, there's a, a sizable population in Idaho that have some sort of disability or live with a disability, but they also have friends, they have coworkers, they have family members and they travel and they want to engage in community activities. They want to explore Idaho, uh, you know, and, and really, uh, you know, take part in a lot of different recreational activities and tourism and recreation. So you know, it's just trying to provide some more awareness of that. That's great. That's great. So as the viewers can see, Eric is very busy and we're just really appreciative of your hard work um, on the committee and also joining us today. Uh, We appreciate the information on the Idaho Housing and Finance Association um, and also just some of those great activities that that we're coming from and sharing your story, Eric. So we want to say thank you for that. And Thank, Thank you. you also to uh, the Idaho Council for the Deaf and Hard of Hearing for um, supporting us with interpreters during this Wednesday. And thank you, a special thank you for Sierra, because I don't know if she thought she was going to get picked on as much, but I think that's what you get <laughs> when you have Eric and Leanne. Um, yep. So thank you guys for joining us. We will be back next week. We will stream again on both these Facebook pages. So look forward to seeing you there. Eric I just and Sierra, I just want to say ciao and uh, enjoy your lunch. Thank you so much for joining us. Yes. Absolutely. And uh, thanks again, Sierra.
<laughs> we'll see you next Wednesday, everybody. Okay. Stay healthy.